Hi, I'm Yemma, and I'm the community liaison at Rosine 2.0. And I'm Zissel, and I'm the project manager of Rosine 2.0. And we're the creators of the What Heals You photo series project, as well as the curators of Rosine in practice. First of all, I literally could not have done anything on this project without you. Um, we joke all the time that we get our best work done together, which is absolutely true. Um, the What Heals You project um, can't happen with just one of us. Like it physically, literally cannot happen with just one of us because we, we like show up to it so equally um, like I hold the interviews and you hold the, the photography. And, um, I think that that's, there's something about that, that like, it's not like, oh yeah, you can go do an interview today or you can go do like, we ha both have to be there. And, um, yeah, so that, I feel like that encapsulates like that whole, like, this is a, a pure collaboration. Like truly, it's like purely collaborative. It can't exist with just one of us. Yeah. I was thinking that the other day. Um, I think I used to do a lot alone because I thought that like made me more good at my craft. If I could like do every single thing on my own, then I had like succeeded mm -hmm. or I was good at something. And it wasn't until um, a few years ago where I was like, I had it completely backwards. Like doing things on my own means nothing. And it also like the end result of that is always worse off. And I think about the What Heals You Project, like I am so inspired by the questions that you came up with and you ask and the conversations that you facilitate that I am ed like better able to take photos that like really encapsulate the person we're talking to in a way that I wouldn't be able to if I was just showing up with a camera. Um, so yeah, I think I was misguided for a long time, <laughs> like trying to fill every role and then filling every role sort of poorly. Yeah, that's encouraged though. I feel like, um, especially I feel like artists, there's an there's this pressure to be like the name. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and you don't share your name. It's like you're you, and you did the work, and you get all the credit, and you get all the glory, mm -hmm. right? And something I think about all the time is like, sharing creates abundance. Whereas like capitalism constantly tells us that like hoarding or like pulling yourself up um, is how you become rich or abundant. But in reality, sharing is what creates abundance. And I feel like um, I feel like you and I like we share time really well, um, and we share food really well. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I think that that our specific partnership in this project um, really just like manifests as sharing in a way that's like so, um, it just feels so natural to share with you. And um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking about food, just the last thing, like it feels like the perfect example of how like doing something on your own, it's always an illusion. Like if you have a chef who's like, I'm cooking and I'm cooking this meal on my own, there were all the people that came before you who got the food to you so that you can cook with it. Right. And it feels like the same thing with moving through the world thinking you're doing everything on your own. There's all these people behind you that just aren't getting credited, but they were still there. Right versus when you are like so in your like knowing that you are working as a group um, and in a partnership or collective with people. Yeah. I think there's a lot of like rhetoric around people pleasing being bad. <laughs> um, but I really think that I do give from a place that wants to see my people pleased you know, and 
Um, I, I know I try not to give all of myself away, but um, sometimes I do and it still feels worth it. Like, I know I shouldn't sacrifice myself, but truly like my family, my chosen family, like you and like um, my community, like if I can contribute to someone's happiness, if I can contribute to someone having a full tummy, like if I can contrib contribute to someone, someone's like learning, that is truly like a place of like fulfillment for me. And so when I give, it really is just, like I give to give, like I give so that um, I can contribute to, you know, just a person. Like I wanna fit, like I wanna fill the vessels in my life up, you know? And like, we always talk about like the symbiosis, right? We're always like mutual aid and symbiosis and like filling each other's cups. And um, I feel like at this point, it's getting cliche, but it's cliche for a reason because like if I like making you matzo ball soup when you're sick, like I, that fills me up too. You know what I mean? To like literally fill you with soup <laughs> fills, fills my heart. <laughs> well, I feel like you're like the ultimate people pleaser because you lean into the pleasure part of pleasing and you're, I mean, from like literally the moment I met you, I was just like, it's all like pleasure and happiness and giddiness and um, yeah, feeling full. Yeah. Where do you get from? Oh, <laughs> <clears throat> oh God. Um, I think I give from like a genuine love for people and creatures and living things, which feels cliche to say, but I, I want everyone to feel like seen and whole and supported and like messing up and trying again. I feel like that's been one of the only things that's come naturally to me that hasn't, that I haven't had to learn was like seeing people in their messiness and wanting them to feel like they can be messy with me and messy out in the world and be accountable for that, but like move through the world authentically because it's so, I think I felt pretty early, it's like really hard to be alive. And that's someone with like an immense amount of privilege and support. Um, and so I give from a place of like really wanting people to feel capable and held. I think that's like one of the reasons why meeting you felt like coming home because like I also like my, I want to be able to hold people's complexities and you like, that's how you show up. Like I was so, it was so easy for me to take all my masks off and let my guard down and just like be a total mess in front of you. And that that's like the epitome of safety is when, is when I don't have to perform and I like don't feel that way with you. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> it's gay. Um, <laughs> my work envisions um, so many futures that are like, I don't know why I'm thinking of a carousel right now, but they're all like in motion together, right? Mm -hmm. So I envision a future that's thoroughly sex positive. Um, I, and on that note, um, that future not only has like a place for sex work, but like sex work is like revered. You know what I mean? It's 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 seen as an honorable community role. Um, I envision a future where everyone is fed and you don't have to do anything to get fed. 
um, that is just built in. Um, makes sense that food and sex are at the top of my list. <laughs> um, I envision a future where safety doesn't feel like a concept and that it's so ever present that we don't even have to think about it. Um, and I, I envision a future in where friendship is like the standard for like relationships and like the, um, yeah, and that like hierarchies don't have, there's no hierarchies in relationship that are dependent on capitalist uh, structures, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that the biggest, like for me, I think my biggest honor in life is to be a good friend. And I think that if that was kind of like the backbone of our societies that we were all just trying to be, or like some people say good neighbor, just be a good neighbor. But like, for me, it's like, just be a good friend to people, you know? And um, yeah, food, sex, friendship, done. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? And it's so hard to respond after that. There's some ways where I'm like, we're just similar. I'm like, what do I say that you didn't say? I think something I've been thinking about a lot is connecting to my ancestors. And I think a future where people feel truly able to connect to their past feels really important to me. I, as a Jewish person, like a lot has been lost in my family history and even trying to dig that up feels so hard. And, and that's a result of a lot of hatred and having to assimilate. And for so many people who are marginalized, there's so many types of assimilation. And I dream of a world where people are able to be their full selves and like look back to the people that came before them to like self-actualize, you know? Like I feel most myself like when I'm connected to my Jewishness. Um, and when people see that in me, like you mentioned matzo ball soup, like when I got sick, the fact that you were like, Z needs matzo ball soup felt like such a huge, important. <laughs> I was like, yes, I, you know me and you know me in my full self, which includes all my people. Yeah, the grounding in history part, um, that's important. I think that I appreciate that your answer to the futures question included history because you know, they're two sides of the same coin. Yeah. And like, I don't know, a future where people have space. I said something else we've been thinking about as someone who's like, both of us are so overworked right now. It feels like there's such a lack of space. Yeah. Um, space to like try new things mm -hmm. and mess up. Like I said before, that yeah. feels like, yeah. Yeah. The lesson is, Let's be messy. That's, <laughs> let's, my, that's my feeling. <laughs> let's stay messy. That's yeah. that's the like the funnest part of being human. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's a wrap. <laughs>